Well, that's what politicians always say. The truth is now is exactly the right time to talk about blame. People deserve to know how we got into this mess and who should be held accountable. Tonight, we're naming names again, telling you who's responsible on our top t our 10 most wanted list, the 10 most wanted culprits of the collapse. We've been named three culprits so far. Tonight, the fourth, a name familiar to many, Senator Phil Graham, who, by the way, got a lot of help along the way to get on this list. Here's 360's Tom Foreman. The start of the holidays, 1999, and the financial industry gets a gift. A new law allowing banks to merge with investment and insurance companies. The big backer, Texas Senator Phil Graham, who says it promotes competition. Never mind that it also overturns a Depression-era law forbidding such economic giants because their failure could crash the economy. The new law's many supporters figure times have changed. Marcus Mabry of the New York Times. Bill Clinton supported that legislation, uh, and so did the vast majority uh, of the Senate. It passed something like 95 to 0, and a huge majority in the House of Representatives. So it was a bipartisan legislation. One Christmas later, and Graham is at it again. This time he succeeds in reducing government regulation on those big financial firms. And with those two measures, some economic analysts say he built the pillars of the current financial collapse. What Senator Graham's worst critics would say was that he allowed uh, an atmosphere, a permissive atmosphere of risk taking with no penalties uh, to take hold. So Wall Street could get as greedy as it wanted and there was no government agency to regulate it. Still, in 24 years as a lawmaker and as a trained economist, too, Graham was a staunch opponent of regulation. Could his success with just two laws really be that critical? Yes, according to progressive economist James Galbraith. I've been quoted as saying he was the sorcerer's apprentice of financial instability and disaster. And I think his authority as an economist, as someone who has a, an advanced degree in our subject, also lent weight to, in particular to his positions. My dear friend and comrade, Senator Phil Graham. Fast forward to this past summer. Graham is an advisor to John McCain, dismissing complaints about the economy. Much. You just hear this constant whining, complaining when, about our loss of our competitiveness. McCain severed ties with him over that. Graham, however, still defends his legislation, telling the Texas Observer, I've never seen any evidence that opening up competition among banks and insurance companies in any way contributed to this. You've got a lot of people trying to rewrite history. Maybe, but in Washington now, that is the minority opinion, as more people in both parties say efforts to cut regulation just went too far. We tried to reach the former senator through his employer these days, a big Swiss financial firm, but we received no call back from Phil Graham, one of our 10 most wanted culprits of the collapse. Anderson? Tom, well, he had a lot of Democrats and Republicans in Congress and the White House who helped him, but Phil Graham now joins our 10 most wanted culprits of the collapse. We began last week, Joe Cassano from AIG, followed by Richard Fold from Lehman Brothers and Chris Cox from the SEC. And now there he is, Phil Graham. More on the financial crisis ahead, but first, Erica Hill joins us with the 